This is a briefing on the video recording format I have chosen. I will be displaying a virtual keyboard on screen so that any keystrokes I perform do not have to be explained. Uh, I type quite fast and sometimes I only remember keystrokes and I perform them instinctually. For example, um, if I'm looking at a function, you know, and I want to get quick documentation, I do control Q. It's hard for me, I don't, I'm not just going to say control Q, you just saw me do it on the keyboard, so you can see how I brought up this menu. You can also use control alt L to reformat code. Um, there's plenty others, most of them can be found in settings, control alt S. Um, or in the drop-down menu gutters in Android Studio. They're extremely helpful. Anyway, that being said, feel free to stop the video and play it again um, later on if you want to know how I performed a certain action. Enjoy. Hi everyone, this is an interactive tutorial on how to make an Android app. Before I start, there are some prerequisites. An internet connection is implied as well as the following skills. Using a mouse, keyboard, or other human interface device. Navigating your file system, so using File Explorer, opening folders, um, opening, I just, uh, uh, that's getting blurred out. Uh, navigating websites, clicking on dialog boxes, understanding and navigating user interfaces on your screen, performing respiration, and being conscious. You need a laptop or a desktop, preferably with 8 gigs or more of RAM, 6 is ideal. Um, it can be running Windows, OS X, or Linux. If you have 4 gigs and you don't have an Android phone, it's probably going to be pretty slow and it, your experience is going to suck. You'll need one of the two things to run the apps that you're going to be making. You'll either need an Android phone or your processor has to support a feature called virtualization and specifically it has to support a feature called VTX. These are features that not all processors have. Uh, I will go over how to check that later. You actually don't need that but it will be unbearably slow if you don't have those features enabled on your CPU. Once you've got your laptop in front of you or your desktop, you're ready for the next step. Hi, welcome to the second step, which is downloading and installing Android Studio. For this step, I'll be using a virtual machine to ensure that my experience is as close to yours as possible. The first part of this step is navigate to developer.android.com forward slash studio and click on download Android Studio. You can accept the terms and conditions. It's up to you whether or not you actually want to read them. I've already, since it's about a gig to download, I've already downloaded it to save myself some time. Step 3. Now that your file is downloaded, you can go ahead and execute it. Don't forget to sharpen your guillotine for this part. Alright, so once you've got the setup in front of you, you can click Next for all the prompts. Um, you can customize it however you like, so if you want to do that, then read everything and then choose the options that best suit your needs. But for most users, not modifying any of the settings is exactly what you want. All right, now that it's done installing, you can click on finish and that will open up a setup wizard. Now the setup wizard will ask you if you want to import settings from a previous installation. If you don't want to or you don't have a previous installation, you can just click on OK. Now the setup wizard will ask you a bunch of stuff. Um, this is up to you. You can use standard. If you're not sure about anything, just click on next. And yes, there is more stuff to download. Um, reason it's so big is you're downloading all of the source uh, all of the libraries that <coughs> Android uses all the source code um, you're downloading uh, 
an Android emulator, um, an image for the Android emulator, like a hard drive, and Intel HAXM, which is a virtualization engine that makes emulating Android devices much faster. I'm going to skip over this for the sake of uh, your sanity. Alright, so you're done with the setup steps, and I'm actually going to switch over to my non-virtual machine uh, version of Android Studio because um, it's quite a lot slower in my virtual machine. Alright, so I'm out of VirtualBox, and you can go ahead and click on Start a New Android Studio Project can customize these however you want and again if you don't know uh, don't know what they are then just don't change them um, unless you want Kotlin support which is a language that compiles into Java bytecode uncheck include Kotlin support because that can cause you moderate confusion in the future when all of your um, all your classes are in Kotlin and you don't know Kotlin so you can click on next. And here's where you can select API versions that you want to target. Why is this a step? What's an API version? What is a form factor? With every Android update, the operating system, the Android OS, um, the things that you can do and cannot do change. And this is because cert <coughs> certain libraries become deprecated in favor of new ones and new libraries are made. A lower API version means that your app will be able to run on more devices because of backwards compatibility. If you have a high API version, you can run really, really old apps, but not the other way around. Uh, a higher API version means your app will be able to run on less devices but can use new features, and this is up to you. By default, they have API 16 selected, which is fairly old, but it, it's it, you can see it says it'll run on 99.6% of devices, so that's fine. Unless you want to make um, an app for Android TV or a car or a miscellaneous Internet of Things device, then you can check one of those boxes, but we're not doing that, so you can just go ahead and click on Next. So this is a handy screen that lets you select from a list of uh, little templates what your first app screen will look like. Let's just do empty activity to keep it simple because all these other ones <coughs> have a bunch of extra stuff that we don't need. And like with the first screen you can you can name this whatever you want but I'm just gonna leave it how it is. Before we edit anything I just want to run our app. However, unless we have an Android phone, which I don't, at least not one with a sufficient OS version, we need to set up an Android virtual device. This is so that we can run it without needing an Android phone. I won't cover um, using your own Android phone here, as, as I said, I don't have one that's up to date enough. If you want to know how to do this, Google Android Debugging Bridge. So you go to Tools, AVD Manager, you go to create virtual device you can select the hardware profile of your phone it doesn't really matter as any apps you should you make should work on all devices if you make the user interface correctly I'll just use a Nexus 5X because why not um, then you've got to select a system image and this is where those processor features are actually important if the architecture uh, of the system image is x86 or x86-64 you need um, VTX enabled on your processor to be able to run it or else it won't work um, and you also need virtualization enabled as well if you don't have virtualization or VTX you can use an ARM64 or ARM EABI image but they will be disgustingly slow because this computer I'm using has VTX and virtualization I'm just going to use API 28 and there is more downloading to be had alright now that the downloads done you can click on finish 
and then you can select this API for your Android virtual device. Go to next, give it a special name like coolest phone ever. Some startup settings, there's also advanced settings. Um, you can <coughs> pretend to be on a slow network, you can give it graphics, memory, SD card memory, uh, keyboard input, a virtual 3D camera, which is very nice. Uh, I believe, yes, you can use your webcam for the camera on the phone as well, which is awesome. When you click on finish, you'll have this little list entry here, and then you can close this window. And now the little play button um, will be green, and you can select from one of these virtual devices. When you click OK, it will build your application to so turn it into an AAR file. And that, well, first an, AP, an AAR, then an APK file. Um, then it will install it on the device using ADB. And with any, with, uh, with luck, we should be able to see our, our app. It does generate a XML file that's just got a text view in it. So what we should see is a constraint layout with a text view that has hello world as the text. A side note, the first time that you um, turn on the phone, it will need to do something called a cold boot, which is just a fancy word or fancy name that name for the phone just turning on from being off. Uh, if you have a specific CPU feature that I don't remember the name of, you'll only have to do that once and it'll save the RAM to disk whenever you click that X button. Just a side note. All right, so once our phone's turned on, uh, Android Studio is able to run ADB, which is a command line tool, Android Debugging Bridge, connect to it, install the APK, uh, and we can see that the XML file we were looking at has been rendered, inflated with content, and it's on the screen, so our app works. Now in the next sections, um, I'll cover how to add stuff to it what's the XML file, how do you handle button clicks, user input, maybe getting stuff from websites, all that good stuff.